So it's a miserable day leaving Tipperary, uh, just at Napa Green there, getting a quick bite tea for breakfast, filling my stomach up. A much, much, much more happier Michael Quinn you're seeing today, I got a good rest, and let's hope the weather doesn't dampen the spirits, but I'm sure it won't. Uh, the feet are in a lot better shape. Ready for the fifth section of the Ireland Way, which is the Multin Way. Try to keep the old spirits up with a bit of a song, you know, a bit of a sing song as, as I go, you know, so... Uh, if there's no grass in the middle of the roads, walk on the grass the side of the roads. A bit more lumpy, but it works for sore feet. By the time I reached Dino Hill, the rain was lashing. I decided to take refuge in a little gem of a shop where the delightful Mary told me some of its 100 plus year history until the rain had subsided. It's so good to be walking through fields and off roads again. Hello. Aoife joined me just outside Denova, where she wasn't long getting into trouble. Knock them down, knock them down. Yeah. Boy, get out, get out. They're going to fall all the way, you know that. Oh, that's right. This guy, this little young guy is playful enough. The other fella. Told me, you ran out. He's a bit older. And he's a hell of a lot crosser. Look at you. Goodbye. Uh. Oh, Porker. Goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. So, are you delighted you sacrificed your holidays for this? This is a holiday. <laughs> I sat around last year, I didn't know what to do. This is exactly what I needed. <laughs> I was going to ask what these things were, but then I found the sign hogweed. Be very careful, guys. Do not touch them. Do not touch them at all. From stampedes, guard dogs, and close encounters with hogweed, we rerouted, only to be caught in rush hour traffic. didn't exactly fancy our chances against our bovine friend. So we headed into Kappa White, where I was able to get my stamp in Ryan Centra. After, I popped into the local pub, where Francis, Liam the owner, and Michael filled me in on Kappa White's fascinating history. Excuse me, people. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Kappa White was famous in the fact that it's, uh, this is the last recorded faction fight took place here in Kappa White in 1807. Uh, it used to be an organised fight between maybe different parishes, there was great rivalry there and some of the fighters, a lot of the fighters uh, would uh, cast themselves as great stick men, they used to fight with sticks, something akin to swordsmanship, you know. There was even uh, teachers of the art of sticks fighting, you know, they took great pride in it. Uh, what kind of injuries would have happened during these faction fights? Oh, uh, sometimes even death, but a lot of fractured skulls. Even, uh, <coughs> uh, I remember my father telling stories about uh, uh, would-be doctors at the time. There were, some of them were blacksmiths because they were, they were able to hone out um, uh, steel in a certain fashion, but he said uh, half a crown would be flattened out 
and they'd open up the skull and pull back the skin and pick out the bits of fragment of crushed bone in the skull and they'd put in the plate. This is the start of the plate in the skull. And the half a crown that was, it was put in underneath the skin and stitched over then. So he said it was usually a blacksmith that just performed this. <laughs> Maybe you know a bit well, more. No, uh, just to come in for a second on that, I'm not an expert on the faction fights, but actually one of those, uh, I suppose, would-be doctors was a man called Rohan. You yes. possibly heard of him. Yeah. He lived further up the sleeve field or the uh, O'Sullivan Bay route, a place called Creamy, of Kilcommon, between Kilcommon and Tipperary. And uh, he was well known for treating people. In fact, he was supposed to demand to give evidence in court that the, the <laughs> Russian doctor had a, a very thin skull. I'm sure there was very little uh, anesthetic in those days. Oh, no, plenty of. So I was going to give it to the local pub. <laughs> <laughs> Different factions, they'd assemble in different areas, they might leave, yeah, that's right, and they had rallying calls. And one of the local calls was Doon, Toon, Karnahalla, File a Club, and Got the Valla. Yeah. And there were others. Yeah. Uh, one particular gentleman, the story was told about him, he staggered out of the pub, and there was a fight going on, and he looked around him and he says, is this a private fight or can anyone join in? <laughs> and with that he pulled out his stick and he started beating his way around. <laughs> Kappa White Village is, I suppose, a bit unusual in that south and west of Kappa White, very flat land, and when you go to the back of the village you begin to go up into the a hillier, well, relatively hillier land. Uh, there are two or three towns lands up there, uh, one of which was Fyla Club. And Fyla Club was famous because that was the size of, of uh, the, a, 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 a cave which belonged to a famous rapparee or outlaw back in the 1700s called Eamon Knick. Not a lot is known about them, it's very hard to separate fact from fiction, but it's pretty certain you were born in that Shanboy in Upper Church, Townsend called that Shanboy, and that he uh, spent uh, maybe 30 odd years after the defeat at Limerick uh, as a rapparee, a kind of a, a Robin Hood type of individual who uh, wasn't in it for his own gain but robbed. Uh, relatively well off and passed it on to the poor and uh, tried to avenge wrongs as he saw them in those days. As I walked the hills of the legendary Eamon Iconic, Francis's song echoed in the back of my mind. <laughs> So that's the Multine way completed. Um, it's been been fun. It was quite drab at the start. Uh, just walking a rose, not much happening. Met some quite interesting people, but uh, where the beauty really lied in was um, checking out some of the places that you might have checked out and just getting into the wind farms and seeing the valleys uh, out in front of you. So it's been uh, it's been nice. It's been a short one, but uh, it's time to hit the Ormond way next.